Hey all, I'm Alex Shan. I'm a product manager at CIM, and today I'm going to be giving a presentation on AI and billing performance. So let's get started. What is artificial intelligence? Broadly speaking, artificial intelligence is technology that enables computers and machines to simulate human intelligence and problem solving capabilities. In essence, the more a machine can think, behave, and make decisions like a human brain, the more advanced the AI is. And what are the types of AI? There are different ways to categorize AI, but I'm going to be doing it today based on functionality, which is, uh, because it relates to the way that we use AI at CIM. There are four types. The most basic form of AI is reactive machines, and this type of AI has no memory of its own. They do not have the ability to learn from past experiences and rely on rules and algorithms to take inputs and turn them into outputs. The best example of this is Deep Blue, a fixed chess algorithm created by IBM that was used to be the world chess champion Gary Kasparov at the time in the, in the 90s. We then have limited memory, and these machines have memory capabilities and can learn from past experiences. Most of the stuff that we see around today as AI falls under this category. They rely on machines being trained on all data to make decisions and give outputs. Think Tesla, self-driving cars, and ChatGPT. Thirdly, we got theory of mind, and there is a significant leap when going into theory of mind AI. These are machines that have their own common sense and are able to use it to interpret data and come up with decisions in real time. They are also able to interpret thoughts, emotions, and intentions of people. It's still under research and development, so there are no definite examples of this yet. And then lastly, we got self-aware AI, uh, which takes a step further and adds the concepts of self and consciousness to the machines. So this remains largely in the realm of theoretical discussion at the moment. Now let's do a quick segue into what we do at CIM and how this all relates to it. So at CIM, we monitor energy and equipment data for buildings in real time. We build technology products to facilitate the operation of buildings by increasing efficiency, enhancing sustainability, and protecting the assets and the people within them. Our core product is Peak, a building analytics platform mainly used by facility managers and HVAC technicians working in buildings. Peak leverages data from existing sources like the BMS, EMS, utility providers, and other systems within the building to reduce energy and downtime, improve thermal comfort, benchmark performance, etc. So where and why do we use AI? There are really four pillars to the Peak platform. We first collect and clean the data, we monitor and analyze 24 seven to catch issues. We then improve buildings by helping fix these issues through guidance and tools. And lastly, we benchmark them against themselves or other buildings. And where exactly do we use AI? In the first two pillars, when collecting the data and when monitoring it to catch issues. And the reason we use AI in each of them is because we had a problem, uh, a problem and this technology happened to be the best solution for it. One thing that we are always wary of is the concept of having a solution looking for a problem because if there's no problem, maybe we don't need AI at all, despite how much hype there is around it. So let's start with collecting data. We use a large language model for tagging and QA building data. This is a form of limited memory AI, which is the second category that I was talking about at the, at the beginning. Commercial buildings have a lot of data points, and that's what I'm trying to illustrate with this AI generated image. Before we can do any type of analysis or even monitoring, we need to clean this data and tag it. Now, of the tens of thousands of data points that are present in a building, we only really need about 10% to do our monitoring. We used to go through all the points manually every time we integrated a new building into our platform, which would take an engineer weeks and sometimes months to do and the accuracy changed from person to person. We now use a machine learning language model to help us tag this data and reduce the amount of work needed from weeks into hours. Then when monitoring the data, we use an expert system to do fault analysis, uh, fault detection, and, and diagnosis. This is a type of reactive machine AI, which is the first category that, that I was talking about. So once we have the data cleaned up and tagged, we need to start analyzing it. A few years ago, we did this manually. So we have all the data now, and let's put it into Excel and start analyzing to, to find any issues with it. That took a long time, and it was not scalable because you need more engineers to do more analysis. Instead, we built an expert system, which is a fault detection tool that consists of a set of rules created by engineers that are analyzing data 24 seven and picking up issues as they happen. Things like equipment running overnight, valve leaks, snap fan belts, pull control strategies, etc. It's essentially replicating an engineer that would otherwise have to be looking at the system 24 seven to pick up these problems. And now we can do it over hundreds of buildings simultaneously. 
Um, the way an engineer would see in the platform is they will receive an alert. So you can see that on the right. And that alert contains all the information. You know, uh, they can train the data and chart the data, see all the data points that we're looking at to pick up these issues. And then the engineer would go and, and fix the, the problem. And in this case, it was a, a VAV that was installed against the round deck. So the, the square VAV was leaking a lot of air um, and it was not able to maintain the, the set point in that space. Now, lastly, what are all the problems that AI could help with? One would be facility managers. They are time poor and have limited resources. So AI could be used there to help them prioritize issues based on potential impact to the performance of the buildings. Another one would be controlling the building based on external events uh, while keeping tenants comfortable. AI could be used to make control smarter with buildings that effectively uh, run themselves, taking into account things like weather, occupancy, electricity, peak demand charges, etc. And then lastly, it would be predicting the failure of equipment to make CapEx planning easier and by forecasting the failure of equipment based on performance and historical data. And that's the end of the presentation. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions either via LinkedIn or, or through Sipsi. Thank you.